Welcome to the Discourse KE. My name is Emmanuel Pamani, and today our discussion is going to take toll on going to the youth and the position in Africa and also in Kenya. My guest today is Angel Mbudia. She has been a leader and a former leader of SONU the, from, in the University of Nairobi. Welcome in the show. Thank you, Mamadi, for having me. Yeah. So, what's the, how does it feel being a youth in Kenya? What's the position of the youth in Kenya and in Africa also? In Africa. <laughs> Okay, Mamadi, being a young person, I don't think you choose to be young. And um, being young is relative, uh, because as teenagers, we have had our fair share of life. And um, we, I think before you turn to 18, life is very nice, but your teenage years, you don't have much to worry about. And as you, as you're past 18, now responsibilities start coming your way and then you have to uh, manage yourself in a certain way and you have to chase opportunities and uh, that is where now the chase for 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 the space in in kenya is like at this time because now young people have that pressure of making it in life and uh, they are seeing other people doing it and with social media that is not becoming attractive and yeah, that's 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 roughly that, that's roughly it from a personal opinion. And then now, when you go to a national scope and you look at young people and um, what is their share of the cake that they're having, and uh, how has it been in the past? Because since independence, Kenya has been dominated by older people, people with experience, and that is what leaves young people out because when you're young you're known to be inexperienced and now i like the, the direction kenya is taking it's changing that narrative which is very interesting and it is not just for kenya alone uh, other countries are also doing the same students are coming out of leadership and joining government more than it was before uh, young people are creating initiatives these are global platform for young people and the narrative is selling, is selling the issue of young people making change is really encouraging and I like what the globe is doing because when you make an impact at your community, whether in business or in environment or in uh, leadership, there is a space for you, there is a space for everyone. It's just creating that opportunity. And then one thing that um, the challenge that we're facing is that oh, we become too many and we still have the same same resources. Kenya is still the same size it was in 1963. And that is the same place we have. And now what has be, what was created in, in 1963 has been consumed entirely. And now we need to create new spaces. We need to create new initiatives. That is why we are not having enough employment opportunities. That is why we are thinking of manufacturing because Africa is a young continent, and uh, we have to know what those children will eat at the end of the day. Okay, yeah. You were the secretary for gender and mm -hmm. uh, international relations, all African student union. Now, what challenges? What major challenges do the youths in Africa face? Well, young people, um, <laughs> we have so many challenges. <laughs> you know, that's the, that's what the, are the major one. <laughs> it's okay, Mama, I get mm -hmm. your question. You know, when you, so when you are a young person, you have so many challenges. Where do you start? And then one thing that defines you as a young person is where you're born. How are you born? Into what kind of family have you been born into that you don't choose? You could be born into a dynasty family. You could be born as a from a from a from a humble background. And um, accessing education, do you get proper access to education? Uh, where have you been born? Do you have access to social amenities? That defines a lot on the kind of challenges young people will face. But we have seen young we have seen young people breaking barriers, and one of the things that maybe they 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 seem to have a challenge with because we were told to go to school, get education. We went to school, we did very well, and then now we've left school. Now it's time to work, but there is no work. There's no, there are no opportunities. So the thing young people are craving for at this time is opportunities. Because the education they're getting, education is there, at least at the basic level, it is accessible. But how they trans transition themselves from being a student into, into the society and making meaningful contribution and earning a living out of it, that is the problem. So you're, you're saying transition 
uh -huh. to, from education and also to employment. To employment. Because so how best can this be addressed? Because we've seen, you mentioned employment, it's really mm -hmm. a big issue. Yeah. And also we see that Africa is a youthful, it's a youthful continent. Yeah. And coming back home to Kenya, it's mm -hmm. also a youthful country. Yeah. And we've seen, what's the correlation? You've been in education. What's the correlation between education and employment and the youths? And what's the poli how does the political space look like? Yeah, okay, uh, we'll start with education and uh, education, we have a lot of uh, mishaps on how we see our education looking like. But again, we cannot dismiss education. If I was not educated, I, I don't know where, I don't see myself anywhere. I cannot imagine myself not having gone to school, not having gone to a university and the kind of thinking socially, economically and politically that has a lot of impact. So we cannot dismiss education, and it is wrong when we celebrate things that, um, that that you didn't go to school and now you're making it. It is one out of a million people. It's a hundred out of thousands of people. But education, out of 500,000 people who will join this university, at least you're guaranteed that at least half of them will go to government because we have a 50% rate almost unemployment. So there's a half number that will be absorbed into something, and then there's another number that will be absorbed into the informal market, and then there are those who will start initiatives, there are those who will go out of the country. That is, a, that is more reliable, that is more factual than just saying one person out of these 500,000 people is making a lot of money. And then one thing you see about um, um, people who never went to school and made it in life, one thing I have seen about them, once they, they get the money, their children, they take them to the best schools. They take them to, the, to, to, to what they define, what they didn't get, they want their children to have that. And one of those things is education. So we can never demean education. It defines who you are in a lot of ways because the kind of relationships you create, how you network, how you <coughs> collaborate is all about education. And then Politically, um, as I just said, um, politics has been uh, dominated by senior citizens for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, now that we're having um, this excitement about asking young people to create their own yeah. businesses, creating business, starting your own business is, 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 a, is a milestone. You, you know, you have to be there 100% of the time. The, the, poli the, the licensing and all that, whether the business takes off and statistics, are showing that only 15% of 100% of those who start, who start businesses actually make it and become stable and run. So we cannot burden young people with that. Uh, we need to create opportunities. And one thing we are, we are doing as a Pan-African, in a Pan-African continent is trying to buy Africa and build Africa and make it in Africa. Because that is the other gap that we have. And it's also an opportunity because this COVID-19 pandemic has shown us that we are on our own. We need to create our own spaces. We need to uh, use the raw materials that we have. And with every cloud, there's a silver lining. And that's the silver lining that we have, the masks that we're having. If, if, if it weren't for everyone grabbing their own and holding their own um, 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 the things that they have, the sanitizers and all that, now we have to create your own, how to devise ways of that. And we need to do that for every other sector. And now we are saying Kenyans should now travel to Masai Mara because now there's no international tourism. So now at least we are taking that direction and we will create more opportunities. And that is what we need to do at this time because we have so many untapped resources that we can actually actualize. Yeah, okay. Talking of opportunities and also initiatives, we've seen that in the Kenyan government, and also in the Kenyan setting, Mm -hmm. There's so many NGOs, mm -hmm. there's so many initiatives, mm -hmm. youth-based initiatives. Mm -hmm. So the expectation is that this initiative will try and drive the statistics of unemployment going down. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, the statistics of unemployment keep going up. Mm -hmm. What could be the problem? Well, at, at this time, talking about unemployment is, 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 is a hectic time because it is not just for Kenya or Africa, it is around the globe. People have lost jobs. Now that is a pandemic and millions of money is going to single pockets and that we are not investing in in the country is becoming an issue if we are keeping money in uh, overseas that money is invested by them and then we, we we lose out on that money at the end of the day but again starting na ngos what what are you doing what is it that you're doing as an ngo that's the other thing because you have to drive something that is making impact something that is relevant to the day 
because what I see more NGOs should do is focus more on climate change, environment, that is an issue we are having. And um, it, it depends on what kind of NGO they are starting. Because again, where is the funding for that NGO coming from? You want donors. You need to create even a business to support your day-to-day -day expenses of your NGO. Because even those that you think you'd start this NGO and donations will come, they are also now trying to keep their money and try and invest it into their own country. And so that will have a mismatch if you don't start an NGO purposed for something that is relevant for the day and something that will keep you going as you're making impact. Okay. Yeah, we've had uh, youth leaders, mm -hmm. especially also in Parliament. We have the National Youth Council, mm -hmm. and people have problems, mm -hmm. especially in the recent issue with Sakaja mm -hmm. and also the recent one with Babu. Mm -hmm. People have problems saying that the youths, yes, they wanted this leadership position. Yes, they've been, they've mm -hmm. gotten this leadership position, mm -hmm. but their character is in question. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that? Well. Um, it is not easy swimming against a river because you say that you go downstream or you go upstream. And if you try to go upstream, now that is what you will find in, in the current political youth space we are seeing. Because these young people have gone there with the expectation that they will be able to drive change, they will be able to maybe make money. It depends on what they want to do in parliament and in, to do in their leadership spaces. But again, there is a system that is already there that I see they are trying to move against and that makes them come out as revolutionists because none of the people we celebrate today, the Thomas Sankara you have there, at his time he was the most unwanted person at that time. Gaddafi was the most unwanted person at that time because they had a different thought. There's no way I'm going to not support young people in office because we cannot uh, close down the entire market because of two mad people. We still need to keep driving the change because we need, we are, we are talking about unemployment. Who is sitting at the decision making table? We cannot keep being on the menu. So one person, two people should not make us look bad. There are still very many young people. The new CAS of uh, um, the CAS, uh, Nadia, mm -hmm. the one appointed by the president, she's doing an excellent job. Yeah. And then uh, Azaki Nuvia in as a CAS, he's, he's, he's driving change positively, and I like that. There are those whom we can put on the limelight as well, instead of just keeping on looking at the cup half empty. So, in your own view, the, the youths are aptly uh, well represented in terms of making policies also into the country? Okay. They are not, we are not, it's not enough, it's still insufficient, we need more people and we need more role models because now that is the other thing that we, we lack as a country, we don't have enough role models and maybe that is also now misdirecting our young people in parliament and uh, having a role model, a mentor is something that is very important and if we don't look into that then we'll be following the wrong people, we will be championing the wrong things. And that's not how it should be. So we should be careful by who we mentor, who mentors us, and who we look up to. Okay. Yeah. You talked about policies. What kind of policies should be put in place for, to, to address these challenges? You see, policies like, uh, like I told you about businesses, one of the yes. things that is driving down businesses, uh, licensing and all those taxes and all that. Again, at the end of the day, government needs to collect revenue, but policies that's, that are youth friendly, like you get a tax holiday for one year if all of you apply for a business and, and, uh, and, and you're all below the age of 35, you get a tax holiday for, for one year and you keep running properly. Those are kind of the kind of the conversations that we should have. And uh, as we are, now, we, are now, we are now at the basics of pushing for scrapping of health loads, health, CR, the CRB, good conduct, all those qualifications that need money, we are at the beginning of that. So moving forward, we should now go into businesses, organizations, and startups by young people for young people to streamline them so that we keep encouraging our young people. I can see whatever, those small things we think we are doing, they make a ve they're making a very huge impact. When you're outside the box, you will see how beautiful the box is looking, but when you're inside and where the work is being done, it is covered in overalls and dirt, and we have to keep going, we cannot stop. Okay, and we are now getting back to the national national issue now. Mm -hmm. How we see that when the, the president was elected, yes. last year's vice president, they were vying on the ticket of youths. Yeah. And that was their dictum, actually. Mm. So do you think they've accomplished much 
have they achieved much in regards to youths in Kenya? Um, well, they speak. They have done a few things because now we have seen um, the issue of the, those the the, parli the bill in parliament. Anyway, it's still based on them not just being in office, but even parliamentarians supporting bills being proposed by young people, and that is something I like. And then what I like the most, what I feel is that there's a more um, fertile environment for young people at this time because if young people is the conversation we're having then we mean it means that it's important because one step to getting mentally um, uh, stable you have to admit that you have a problem and you start speaking about it and we are talking about it and we are making it a headline now that we are questioning the character of young people that we are appreciating other young people that is that, that that's that's excellent we need to keep growing and we need to keep working on the things that we know are, we are doing wrong because now we need to look into research we need to 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 look at the policies that are that are being put in place recommended but not implemented because kenyans are brilliant brilliant brains brilliant scholars but then if it just gets to paper and that's it then that, that there's a problem so when you say that you need to move from just the paper now getting to the real work yeah, okay now get get into the education bit of it how would we classify it and make it more practical so the government coming up with the idea of tibets mm -hmm. how practical is it going to be in order to scale up and scale up mm -hmm. the unemployed youths yeah okay um now that you know the globe keeps changing and yeah. eight for four was good for that time and now that we have moved into a different space we've had to change so let's give this new curriculum time, the one that just rolled out. Now that takes time, five, ten years, we need to see the kind of people that we will turn into universities because if they start now the next uh, 14 years, even now they'll join university, you can now see the crop of this implementation that has been made. So um, rolling out TVETs is an excellent idea. It is not just a Kenyan thing, it's a very continental issue. It has been spearheaded by the African Union very extremely. And as the All Africa Students Union, we are uh, we support the the, the Tibet drive because we need to. As Africa is moving into manufacturing, we will need plumbers, we will need electricians. We, we cannot outsource that. We need roads. Who is going to work on those roads? And and that that idea of having Tibets for young people um, is is a great idea. What we need now to do is because of online learning, we need to verify online courses. I need to be confident that when I take this course online and I take it to an employer, when I take it to, it is regarded as as, as valid and, uh, and can be used for promotion because we have for a long time demeaned online learning. And now we need to appreciate that because there are so many courses that you can do online. Same, same thing that you do in class, same thing online. And that is something that now we need to look into. We shouldn't be talking about being uneducated at in this century and 50 years after independence. That's okay. Yeah. So how does the future be lived in Kenya and in Africa look like? <laughs> how does it look like? Okay. Um, how do you paint it? Uh, mm -hmm. You see, uh, as a continent, we have had very many issues since its birth. And uh, we are moving from colonialism. And then after colonialism, we got independence. And then after independence, countries went into coup d'etats. And then we see a lot of uh, Idi Amin's and, and, and all those people who came after, and then we see apartheid coming in. So the foundation for Africa has not been good in the past. But I can now see the precedents being set today. Now we are seeing a, a, an, an African president getting a Nobel Peace Laureate Award. And that is promising. Oh, sorry, Prime Minister of Ethiopia getting a Nobel Peace. That is promising. We are seeing Nelson Mandela being celebrated. That was not something Nelson Mand Mandela had in his time. So as young people of today, we have a better foundation than our predecessors. So I am very positive about the future. It is going to it is youthful and it is also female, which is exciting. And if we keep moving on with this momentum that we have, we are going to get there. Okay. Yeah. What, what are your last words <laughs> to the youth in Africa as you wrap up? <laughs> which one is my camera? <laughs> all right um to young people um to dress up to wake up to dress up and to show up that one has been the best hashtag i have ever seen and this is the time our environment is fertile we need to make hay while the sun shines and the sun is shining on us 
So all the best in what you do and keep doing it, keep leading those initiatives. There are a lot of opportunities globally, continentally, and nationally. We need to take over this space. The future is youth. There you have it from Angel Budia, Nick Hay and Sunshines. Thank you.